All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over 11 Google ad strategies that you can use for your campaigns. It's really gonna be geared more towards search campaigns, um, but I really just wanna go over some different strategies and best practices to get the most out of your Google ads campaigns. So some of these might seem pretty simple. Um, we're not going through any really advanced strategies today. They're gonna to be pretty simple strategies that I use in pretty much almost every campaign that I run. So we're gonna get right into it. So the first one is gonna to be to use the Google Keyword Planner to plan your campaigns. So we've gone over the Google Keyword Planner in depth. We have a specific video about the Keyword Planner and you can find our tutorial on our channel. We'll also put the link in the video description, but um, when you go to your Google Ads account, what you need to do is click on Tools and under Planning you can see Keyword Planner and you can actually pretty much build your entire campaign by using the Keyword Planner. All you need to do is type in a keyword to begin and then when you click on it, you can do add to plan, you can add to a new ad group, and you can create all sorts of different ad groups just based on whatever it is you're trying to target. And you can also do the keyword match type. And when you start building your campaign here, you're gonna be able to see a plan overview as well, which is gonna allow you to forecast your campaign so you have a pretty good idea of how much, how many clicks you're gonna get, how many impressions you're gonna get based on the bids that you set. So highly recommend first starting with the keyword planner before you create any campaign um, so if you just go to your Google Ads account you go to tools it's gonna to be right here under planning so another option I really like is Neil Patel's uber suggest so if you go to neilpatel.com slash uber suggest it's gonna pull up this tool you can enter a keyword just like PPC advertising and you can get some more ideas um, under overview it's gonna show search volume whether it's high or low SEO difficulty paid difficulty what the average cost per click is if you click on keyword ideas you can get a ton of different keyword ideas as well and if you scroll down you can see keywords the trend the volume the average CPC so just more data to help you build your search campaigns so you definitely want to start with the keyword planner if you want to use uber suggest it's just another tool it pulls in a lot of data as well so I like both of these tools when I'm building campaigns and I use them for pay-per-click advertising and search engine optimization now number two is to import your conversions and make sure you optimize your campaigns for them. So here's the conversion screen. You can find this again through tools and under measurement, you're gonna see conversions here. So we went over this in more detail in our Google Ads tutorial if you're not familiar with conversions, but basically what we did was we linked our Google Analytics account to our Google Ads account and then all you need to do is go to the conversions page, click on the plus sign, you can either add the Google Ads pixel to your website and you can import website conversions. You can import app conversions like every time someone installs your app, you can tie it back to your campaigns. You can track phone calls. So whether it's someone calling you directly from one of your advertisements or going to your website and calling you after they visit your website, you can track phone calls as a conversion. You definitely wanna do that if phone calls are important for your business. Or you can go to something like import conversions, click on it, they have Google Analytics, Firebase, third-party app analytics, Salesforce, or other data sources. So all we do is click on Google Analytics, click on continue, and it's gonna allow you to import any of the goals that you've created. You can import e-commerce goals, so you can import pretty much everything that you want to, and then you can optimize your campaigns for them. So all you need to do when you create your campaigns is set up a goal of leads or sales and if you don't have that set up just go into your campaign settings so we opened up a campaign here we opened up the setting screen and you can make sure you're optimizing for either sales or leads and when you go to your conversions and import them you're going to see category here so some of the different categories are purchase sale or leads so we're optimizing for contact form fills we're optimizing for when people visit our marketing page and we're going to count that as a lead and you can also do something like import transactions or import different things like that and do it as a sale. And then you can optimize your campaigns for either sales or leads. So importing conversions and optimizing for them will give you the best possible results from your Google Ads campaigns. So number three is gonna to be to use target CPA or target ROAS bidding strategies. So I like to use portfolio bidding strategies. Again, going into tools, under shared library, you're gonna see bid strategies. So you're gonna see a page just like this. And when you click on the plus sign, you can create new bidding strategies. So it's very simple to set up. You can do a target return on ad spend bidding strategy, select a campaign and select any campaign in your account to use target return on ad spend name it and then you can set a target return on ad spend for example we'll do 150 percent so that means for every dollar you spend you want to return a dollar fifty in revenue so just another way to get more out of your campaigns is using some of these automated bidding strategies like target roas or target cpa and specifically setting up portfolio bid strategies so if we come back over to the campaign settings here click on cancel under goal 
under bidding you can see here newsletter target CPA so this just pulls in right from the portfolio bidding strategy it's going to show our target CPA is seven dollars and ultimately what you want to do is be able to import these bidding strategies and get your target CPA or target ROAS uh, you want to get your target CPA down over time. You want to increase your target ROAS. So maybe you start at 100%, you eventually get to 200%. So just trying to get the most out of your budget. So number four is going to be to create remarketing audiences. Um, so you can create YouTube remarketing audiences. You can create remarketing audiences based just on your website visitors. And then Google is automatically going to create similar audiences as well. And then you can also do combined lists. So you can take a couple different audiences and combine them into one single audience. Now they used to keep it more open for uploading a customer list, but you actually have to spend $50,000 lifetime in your account to be able to use customer match. So my account's not eligible because I haven't spent that much in this account. Um, but if you have an account where you're spending a lot of money, you definitely want to do that as well as create customer lists here. You can upload app users. You definitely want to use website visitors, audiences, and YouTube users, audiences, and you can create custom combinations as well. So it's a best practice to use remarketing audiences. You can use them in your search campaigns, your YouTube campaigns, your display campaigns, your Gmail campaigns. So you can use them in pretty much every type of campaign. I'll go over how to set up in your search campaign and one of the other strategies, but definitely want to use remarketing audiences. And number five is, we're just going to get right into it, is going to be to create custom audiences and specifically create custom intent audiences. So you can create custom affinity audiences as well, but they're going to be a little bit more broad. So it's going to say people with interests aligned with your brand. Now, custom intent is going to be people actively researching products and services. So I like to try to reach people as they're actively researching uh, different products, different services, whatever it is. You create custom intent audience. And then you could do include people based on their in-market keywords, or you can do Google search terms. I generally create these with Google search terms. You can name your audience, and then you can add 50 search terms here. Um, and again, coming back to the keyword planner over here, just a great idea for creating these types of audiences is to use the keyword planner and then upload your keywords right to the custom intent audience here. Just add all of them, click on create, and it's that simple to create custom intent audiences. And then you can use them in your display campaigns, your video campaigns, and really get the most out of your advertising budget as well. So now to go along with audience targeting, one thing people don't realize is that you can use audience targeting in your search campaigns. It's actually a best practice to use audience targeting. You want to set your targeting setting to observation. Um, so targeting is really going to narrow it down if you set that as your setting. Um, so targeting says allows you to narrow the reach of your ads to specific criteria. Observations allows you to increase or decrease bids based on the audience that you're targeting. So if we click on audiences for our search campaign, you can click, you can add it to the ad group level, you can add it to the campaign level. Uh, we're just going to do the campaign level for this example. And then I usually set observation, it says recommended here. Targeting is really going to narrow it down, but you can use targeting if you're really trying to target a narrow audience if you have a small budget. But by using observation, you can set up different audiences here. So for example, I can say anyone who has viewed my YouTube videos will click on save. And under bid adjustment here, I can increase the bid adjustment to something like 10%. So if someone, if I'm usually bidding a dollar on a keyword, I can adjust it to $1 and 10 cents. It's good. So it's going to add 10% to my bid, whatever it is. So you can increase your bids, you can decrease your bids based on these different audiences. Maybe you don't want to target one of these audiences at all. Um, so what you can do is just edit it and then decrease your bid adjustment. So one way to do it is to use audience targeting. I highly recommend using that in your search campaign as well. Now number seven is going to be to create three ads in every single ad group. Use responsive search ads. You can use expanded text ads. When you're creating new ads here, it's going to say text ad, responsive search ad, or ad variation. Um, we've gone over a lot of these different things in separate tutorials. We've done responsive search ads. We've talked about dynamic keyword insertion in text ads. We've talked about you creating ad variations as well. Um, so you definitely want to check out those tutorials if you're interested in creating really great advertisements but you can easily create a lot of responsive search ads at once. Um, so when you create your first responsive search ad, all you have to do is click here, click on edit, go to copy. You can copy this advertisement and then right here is paste. So you just click on paste and it's going to say pause new ads after pasting. And if ad already exists in destination, create duplicate. So we can do that, click on paste and it's going to add that new advertisement. And then all you need to do is go in and edit it. So it's pretty easy to create more advertisements. You can also do it with Google Ads Editor as well. Um, so just some different options, but creating three ads for each ad group, Google is automatically going to rotate your ads and optimize them as they serve different advertisements. So it just gives you more opportunities to optimize your campaigns.
So next is going to be use add extensions. Um, so we have some of our site link extensions open here. So you can click here to adjust all the different extensions. We're going to have a video coming out along with this video. It's going to come out the same exact day about add extensions and all the different extension types. But any extension that applies for your business you want to use. So if you can take calls for your business, you want to add call extensions. Structured snippets can show some different features of the products and services you're offering, whether it's hotel amenities, maybe it's different courses that you offer at a university call out extensions, you can talk about some different promotions that you're running, you can talk about some of the benefits of your products. Message extensions, you can get people to text message you directly, you can have it sent to a phone or an email and then you can reply to people very quickly. Location extensions, so if you have a physical store location, it'll show the address, it'll show the store hours. Affiliate location, so if you're selling some of your products at Best Buy, for example, or something like that, you can actually set up affiliate locations so people know where they can purchase your products. Price extensions, if you have specific prices for your products or services, you can set that up here. So I could say we offer PPC advertising services for X amount per month, um, so people know how much they're going to pay before they actually contact us and click on our advertisement. App extensions, so this is going to be on mobile devices, you can get people to download and use your app. And then promotion extensions, so, so any special offers that you're running, maybe you're running a Black Friday sale, maybe you're running a summer sale or something like that, you can add a promotion extension. So just another way to improve your advertisements. So creating three ads per ad group and making sure you take advantage of all the extensions that apply to your business will really help you get more out of your campaign. So number nine, and this might be the most important one, is to make sure you spend a lot of time in your search terms report. So this is a sample campaign that we ran in the past, a dynamic campaign. Um, so if you come to your search terms report, you can see that there's some search terms that might be a little bit broad based on what you're targeting. So for this one, we were targeting beach themed doormats. So you can just see something like doormats, doormat, way too broad. And you can see our click through rate is pretty bad for these types of keywords. But as you get to coastal front doormat, ocean doormat, these are actually good keywords. So you don't have to worry about excluding them or anything like that. But if you see a keyword that you don't want in your campaign, you can come to the search terms report and add it as a negative keyword. Just simply click on it add as negative keyword and it's as simple as that so coming into the search terms report and adding negative keywords is really one of the best ways to optimize your campaigns especially if you want to start your campaign a little broad and start narrowing it down as you go um, which some people like to do especially if you have a larger budget um, I've worked with clients that have some larger budgets that like to target broader keywords so they can really see any type of keyword that is relevant for their business that maybe they didn't think of. Um, so this is where the search terms report comes in handy. You can also see data here about conversions, cost per conversion. So if you have any keywords that are wasting your budget, you can exclude them and make sure you're not targeting them anymore. So 10 and 11 are kind of going to go hand in hand. So number 10 is going to be understanding that search campaigns, display campaigns, and video campaigns all perform very differently and you should set up different bid strategies for all of them. You should make sure that you set your budgets differently for all of them based on what you're looking for. So a video campaign might not drive conversions as well as a search campaign does, and display campaigns might not perform as well as search campaigns either. Otherwise, you might find that you get the best out of a display campaign, but making sure you understand that they're all going to perform a little bit differently. They all have different goals, and you can set them up with different goals. Just because you're not getting the same return on ad spend with a display campaign doesn't mean it's not worth testing um, as part of your overall Google ad strategy. And the other thing is when you're creating campaigns, it's going to say create a new campaign. You want to set your goal here. So let's just say, for example, you're trying to drive leads. So there's search, display, shopping, and video. So all completely different types of campaigns. But if you click on search here and click on continue, it's automatically going to opt you into the search network and the display network and Google search partners. So if you're running a search network campaign, you want to make sure you exclude the display network. It's completely different. The targeting is completely different. Performance is completely different. So just keep it as search network and include Google search partners when you create your search network campaigns. And then you can create other campaigns completely differently. Um, so number 11 to go along with number 10 is just to make sure you test all these different campaign types. So we're going to come over to our Surfside PPC YouTube channel here now. Um, so some of the recent tutorials we've created, Google Dynamic Search Ads, Gmail Ads, we have Google Display Ads, our Google Ads tutorial, YouTube Ads tutorial, you can learn about YouTube bumper ads, YouTube video ad sequence ads. So there's a lot of different options there. So just make sure that you understand all the different campaign types that you can run. Um, so all of our tutorials are completely free. We just show you how to create your campaigns and set them up really to be profitable from the very beginning so you can get the most out of your Google Ads campaigns. So 
This is 11 Google Ads strategies. Uh, make sure you take advantage of all of them and you use all of them in your campaigns. If you have anything missing right now from one of your campaigns, you want to go back and change it. Um, and last but not least, we're going to be coming out with a free Google Ads course. So if you go to surfsideppc.com slash Google Ads, you can see free Google Ads course coming soon where we basically take you through step by step about targeting keywords, different advertisement types, how to do conversion tracking, and making sure that you're creating great Google Ads campaigns. So if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching our video today, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.